When emergency first responders were overwhelmed by Los Angeles County's most destructive fire yet, a band of surfers, along with their neighbors and friends, stepped up to defend their home turf in Malibu. Their devotion to home drove them to show up for their community during the fire and for years afterward. And now, a model they call the Community Brigade Program could change everything leading to more lives and more homes saved during the increasing wildfires across not just California, but the world. Join reporter Adriana Cargill from KCRW, NPR's All Things Considered, Crooked Media, and more, as she investigates a wildfire story that is not depressing, but is, in fact, a clear hope for the future. Listen now to Sandcastles, an award-winning podcast about home, how we create it, and why we fight so hard for it. Hi, everyone. Hope you're all safe and sound out there. Today brings another one of our Do Better Better essays, crafted to help you think more clearly about the future today. A reminder that these complement the audio version of our weekly newsletter, and of course, our groundbreaking conversations with diverse interdisciplinary humans all working on the front lines of the future. We're so damn grateful to have you as part of our community, uh, working alongside us on the world's biggest problems and opportunities. Two quick reminders. One, you can get these essays, our newsletter, and more right in your inbox at importantnotimportant.com. And two, you can always send us feedback at questions at importantnotimportant.com. Feel free to record a voice memo on your phone and send that in too, and we might use it in a future episode. Here we go. Do Better Better Number Two. Why Do We Exist? Originally published June 26th, 2020. Humanity, along with the ecosystems that humanity relies on, is facing stress tests unlike any we've faced before and all at once. These are not exclusive to America. Among others, COVID, a volatile market, a changing climate, jobs crisis, civil rights struggles. Each of these has worked in isolation and together to expose the fissures in our economy and society. Systems thinking is essential to understanding what we're dealing with and what we've wrought to expand. We face a novel virus, but one exponentially more likely to jump from animals to humans because of where we live now and how we eat now. This is a virus we consciously chose not to be more prepared for. We are in a market more or less untethered from the reality of world events, and even more so from the day-to-day challenges of most Americans, most of whom cannot even begin to comprehend the ease with which America's tiny but massively wealthy and influential upper class makes money. Compound interest means two very, very different things to America's increasingly distinct socioeconomic classes. We endure a climate that is hotter and more combustible than any in humanity's relatively short tenure as alpha species and due almost entirely to our growth-desperate stewardship. We work jobs, if we're lucky, that are untethered to that growth and its attendant major costs that create no lasting benefit, tangible or not, and that are increasingly challenged to provide for the most basic of human requirements, water, food, air, and healthcare, to start. Civil rights in America are forever tenuous in a country designed by slave owners on a platform of personal freedom and a pursuit of happiness, for the slave owners anyway, both of which, at best, seem impossibly unattainable when you are uniquely subject to pre-existing conditions that make you more susceptible to such a virus, when you are unable to invest in such a market, when the heat affects you first, when your job driving a car doesn't provide you with health care or child care, but only rallies the market for the rich while it makes the heat worse for everybody. In nearly every case, what we sowed in the 20th century, for better or worse, has been harvested in the 21st. These problems will not go away easily or by one person or with one election or be fixed with big tech. Many will suffer. Many are suffering. But you and your company, no matter its size, its industry, or reach, can look at these problems as opportunities on the international level, national and local. Do you produce textiles? Offer insurance? Do you design organic chemistry experiments? Distribute food? 
send stuff to space, teach children, market new products, sell advertising? Do you write for TV? Do you preach? Whatever the case, I encourage you to step back and ask, why do we exist? And in light of your answer, with these problems that so many millions face right now as context, you have the opportunity to make your business be more timely and necessary than ever, and potentially vastly more successful. Don't believe me? Look at how well ESG-focused companies and funds and bonds have performed this year. Investors are investing and consumers are paying attention. The same goes for our prestigious overpriced universities too, by the way, of which I'm the product of one. Fighting for relevance to justify your existence? Stand for something. Reorient your majors to be interdisciplinary staging grounds to attack these exact problems. Worried about market size? Get the fuck out of here. These are going to be the biggest markets of all time. Look around at the people in the streets. Imagine your perfect customer, just one customer. How can you relieve that person's pain points? How can you help them better understand what's happening? How can you help them get ahead? Ask what you need to do to become essential to that one person. Now imagine 300 million of their friends in this thing together. Imagine a business landscape where the reaction to your company's product isn't, huh, or cool, but rather, this is exactly what I need. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. A reminder, we would love if you joined our community and subscribed to these episodes today, anywhere you listen to podcasts, and also that you'll find plenty more awesome tools to fight for a better future at our website and in our newsletter at importantnotimportant.com.